TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy May Edition with your host, Pablo Gunner, the Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about X Men 97. If you're new here, for our grade scale, for most of our stuff, because most stuff is streaming, it's going to be a must-see, must-stream. Then it's just going to be check it out as the mid-grade, and then the low-grade is going to be pass. Now, if you can't stream it, then it's going to be probably a buy, and then rent, if there's a rent or some form of that, since there's, we don't really, you know, you could try it, I guess, you know, like, which is pretty much Game Pass type services, right? Or Gamefly. Yeah, 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 you could do that. Let's just go jump into uh, X-Men 97. Yeah. So, which is pretty much the finale, like the last few, last three episodes, right? Yeah. I don't think those were the only ones we didn't cover. Yeah, it was uh, interesting to watch. Uh, basically, uh, it was kind of nice seeing Forge finally with like the rest of the X-Men. And then uh, Storm with her powers back. Mm -hmm. And of course... There were some questionable choices. Okay. Like, I understand Logan wants to kill Magneto, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but is he really the best person to send after Magneto? I'm going to argue yes for... Well, here's the thing. The thing is there's a meme going around that Scott made him go on that mission because he found out that he kissed his wife. I don't know how he did. But anyways, that's why he sent him. But then when you think about it, that whole fight, Wolverine's the only one that really got one in on Magneto. Like, he, the, he, the dude, and I don't know how he didn't detect it with his Master of Magnet, the, the dude that's made out of metal literally came up behind you and stabbed you in the back. Something that's really cool, though, and I think they kind of just did this for, for story. I, I think they do this f to check the boxes of, hey, it, it, it's from the comics. Yeah, does it make sense? No, absolutely not. It absolutely does not make sense. Why are you going to send him down there and not, like, and swap him with somebody else, like Morph or Cable even, right? Like, it just or, doesn't make sense. I wouldn't send Cable, but just someone, like, Storm probably would have been a solid choice. <laughs> someone that could actually potentially hurt him. Right. Versus... Someone that could maybe get one surprise attack, if even that. I mean, they were kind of messing him up there for a little bit. And then Cyclops did his thing, which I was like, wh why? Why did he do that? That confused me. Why did Cyclops shoot Professor Xavier and be like, oh no, the other team's not ready yet. Give him more time. And I'm like, what, what would have been the repercussions if he would have just controlled Magneto? Like, I don't see the problem there with just being like, oh, I'm going to control Magneto and just make him not do anything or yeah. or fix the problem I, I that that's something i was i'm still confused about which is why like it was an interesting turn of events but it just felt like they did it for the sake of for the shock and awe and like oh my gosh and so we can continue it next episode because they had him right like they had him at that point they had magneto so to say like yeah, you didn't really need Wolverine there. Yeah, he got one in on him. And the thing is, the line that he says to Magneto, Magneto actually said it to him in the previous iteration, in, in the in the regular X-Men Taz, right? In the animated series. He actually says that. He says, you know, the braver, the first to go in, in war or something like that. Now, it was like, the phrase was slightly different when Wolverine said it, but it was still really cool. And like I said, they got that moment out of the comics where he pulls the metal off of his bones. And like I said, once again, I kind of feel like they just did it because they went, hey, what happened in the comics? So this is our chance because we're not going to have our chance again. You know, yeah, it doesn't entirely make sense, but it's going to work. And it, and, it, and it did. I feel like it did work out. What are some other issues you had? I mean, that was really the, the main, main one. one. Because I was going to bring up the fact that Dream Grey Phoenix doesn't just kill Bastion and instead she just like repairs the headpiece and then puts it on him which that, that would have been an easy fix I mean I also kind of feel like maybe she didn't have like it's just a momentary control like use like she can't use it all the time she's just kind of like oh sometimes I can use it and then boom that's it I'm done right like that she can't use it the phoenix all the time like I think it's like a literally life or death situation is the only time 
she can use it, and it's for a very short time period because it like burns her out, right? And well, so that, and it will eventually kill her, right? And so that's the other thing too is like they kind of use that as like a scapegoat, but it ended up being really solid. I I've seen people complain that like like I said that Jean Grey didn't kill him, as well as why didn't the X Men just kill Bastion too? Like. They were messing him up, and then they had the chance to just completely defeat him and stop him. And, and then they were like, no, we're going to try to befriend him and stuff, which is kind of like an anime thing. And and it's But it's an X-Men thing. Like, that's kind of like the w- whole way he's raised his kids is be like, you know... I wouldn't even say it's an anime thing. I would say it's a Goku thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it is more of a Goku thing. <laughs> Oh, Frieza, Vegeta. Like, there's so many of the villains he's trying to... But anyways, yeah, you're right. So... And then, I think he goes even further than the X-Men do. He's like, okay, I'm gonna... I'm about to destroy you, but... I gotta give you a lecture on why you are wrong. Yeah. He always does that too, Goku. Which is sometimes epic. But, yeah, so, overall, it was really well done... But really what it comes down to me is the same things that we talked about with the other parts, right? We did a part one and we did a part two. This would be our part three of talking about X-Men, which is the problem is it's too fast paced. That's much too early. Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. I really feel like they should have spread out the Madeline prior and then they should have spread out. They should have, they should have spread out all of it. Like they should have made even the whole forge that story arc. They should have made that multiple episodes as well because the way that they did it, they could have packed it into one episode, but they should have spread it out at at least amongst, they did end up spreading it out amongst what, like two or three episodes. And it should have been actually three episodes. What they should have done is done like, Madeline Pryor should have been at least two or three episodes. The Storm should have been a few episodes. Um, The Jubilee could have been one episode. But I really feel like episode five in all of Genosha, that also should have been its own story arc, and that should have been the finale. Yeah. And then this should have been season two finale. Because when you put five up against this finale, I go, I'm sorry, but my emotions... I'm emotionally like kind of already cut off. We're like, unless you kill somebody that I care about more, which who do you care about more than, than I'm going to spill the beans gambit? Like who? The, the, what they tried to do failed. Right. They tried to do an emotional impact on the most popular X-Men character, Wolverine. The problem is they, if they were going to go that effect, they did it too soon. Mm-hmm. They should have waited till the last episode or something. Right. Because, like, it kind of died down before the season died down because you're like, oh, he's going to be fine. He's just going to have bone claws now. Right. Which has already been seen by the public, so it's not, like, super shocking. Right. We saw it in Days of Future Past. It is widespread known. Like, that's, yeah, he has bone claws. And the uh, comics, of course, but origins. those are hardcores. X-Men Origins. Oh, yeah. So, multiple movies. So, we know. So, and, and that's what, for me, when it comes, it comes down to writing, which is your emotional climax should also be your actual climax. Because if you try to do an emotional climax and then another climax, and it doesn't top it, it's just, it doesn't come out as powerful. And that's the only problem that I had with this. It's still phenomenal. It's. I still think it's the best thing that's on TV for years. Like, I, to me, it's still my number one right now, like, show. And it will be for a while. But at the same time, it doesn't... It's not without its faults. And so it's not perfect. But I still give it a must-see, must-stream. Yeah, it's definitely a must-see, must-stream. Just wish they would focus on season finales Mm -hmm. because the whole focusing on mid-season finales is stupid well they didn't do a part one part two if they would have that would have been okay you didn't give us time between each part you know what i mean like that would have been fine if they would have been like boom this is part one and then give us time and then release part two and then it would have been like 
Okay, we were recovered emotionally. Now we're ready for some more emotionally. Yeah, like a Stranger Things type thing. Right. Where they, it was done correctly mm -hmm. and executed well. Right, perfect example. This was not. It, if you're going to be airing it all at once, then focus on a finale and then have a mid-season like, shocker or something, but nothing to a finale level. Right. I just feel like they're going too fast. They're going to run out of material quick, and this is really only going to last... And at this pace, they're only going to last maybe three seasons. Yeah. Five suppo tops. Supposedly, Bo said he had planned on doing roughly five seasons. Okay. But we'll, we'll see, because... He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> and he's not uh, dead, but <laughs> he's, he's dead to Marvel. Yeah. They yeah. even... Uh, so I watched the making of... Right? Because I've, I've been watching the making ofs, and a lot of them are really well done. Like, the making of Miss Marvel. Like, it just brings so much humanity to it, of the Marvels, I mean. Like, that's a phenomenal one. Like, if you're, you know, a hater, I think that's a perfect thing to watch. You'd be like, these are people, you know? But well, they're people, but at the same time, Marvel gave an inexperienced director full reins and reaped the benefits of it i thought that movie was phenomenal i've seen it so many times so i still stand by it as like a real it's and i put it up there with one of the top movies of that of that marvel has done period um so but that was awesome too because once again you see the humanity you see the voices behind the characters that was phenomenally well done and so even like i said i would say like both of those are worth the must see must stream so yeah the only thing i don't like is they conveniently took out the main writer. Right. That's what that's that's where I was going with that, which is yes, they, they cut him out completely, and I'm like, why? You should have left him in because like I get it, but I also don't. Because it's like fine, don't put him in the season two. But he if he did so much, why did you cut him out? Like that just seems wrong what they did by doing that. That's that's messed up. So screw you, Disney. <laughs> I know it's them. So anyways, yeah, must see, must stream, right? Yeah, must see, must stream. Thank you for watching and checking us out. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Um, check out our merch. I'm wearing the Doctor Who uh, lettering with the Doctor Who TARDIS. We have other Doctor Who stuff. Um, this is actually was a prototype, so I've actually dragged it down so it's it's not so high up. So now the lettering is like more like right here and then... The, the TARDIS is going to be right here. but um, And then I'm wearing, rocking my Asul Beetle all print, um, not leggings, what do they call them? Joggers. Uh, which I, the all print is always the w way to go. I, they're probably not on the site though because we only have 100 items. But if you want it, we can hook you up. We can get them for you. And you're sporting uh, the periodically nerdy shirt. Which is just, it's nerdy. Periodically, yeah. obviously. It's hilarious and brilliant. Which is so fitting for the ambassador. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Let's do some shout-outs, too. I got some shout-outs for the peeps. For that, always at the top of the list, we have... Atticus. Atticus. Uh, and then we have, um, which is, he's a YouTuber, and he's just raw and, and, and real, and he's a teacher out in Vietnam, and but he also just does slice-of-life stuff that's... It's really interesting, really great, you know, what it's like to have relationships with friends, you know, people of the um, r romantic relationships, even people of the opposite gender of your own or whatever. And uh, and and it's so cool. I love just seeing it because it like the land is just beautiful. Like it's it's so cool to see. Uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde is another one that is great. Uh, they do comics like online comics and they're great and every it seems like every post they make is so inspirational so i love their stuff a uh, film rage those guys are hilarious they cover all films doesn't matter they will cover all of them because they like us will waste their time so you don't have to and uh mary may media which kind of sounds like what it is which is anime media um and a little americana i guess i don't know um so yeah, and then uh, Superpower List, those guys are awesome, hardcore comic book nerds, talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth.